Picard Episode 3, Be Careful What You Wish For. Hey, it is Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming right at you from the heart of Trek land here, letting the dust settle just a bit on all the recent Trek headlines of the day. So instead of a hot take or a quick take, you get a second opinion from Dr. Trek. Hey, I have been writing, editing, interviewing, witnessing, dot connecting, fanning Star Trek for, yeah, a while now. And I just wanted to say, yes, be careful what you wish for, Lieutenant. You may get it. Hey, all these years, all of you Trek fan folk out there wanting to say, hey, let's push the timeline along. What happened after Nemesis? I want to know what happened after the Dominion War and after Janeway got back from the Delta Quadrant with the board. What's going on with everybody? Well, episode three, 17 seconds. There it sits. Oh, you just had to ask. You just had to ask, right? Well, what's worse than having the entire shapeshifter Founder's Dominion fighting you? Having a rogue faction of shapeshifter Founders fighting you. <laughs> Yeehaw! Buckle up. Here we go. Paranoia for a whole new generation. Or, or you ask for it. Everybody wanting that Beverly Picard. Where's the BJLers when you need them? They're all been wanting for years, for decades. What happened to Beverly and Jean-Luc and these other women in his life? Get them out of here. Well, now you know. And since episode one, you've been wanting the scene. Well, now you've got the scene. And boy, they broke up five times. Oh, <laughs> you, you BJLer fanfic folk. You don't know what you're in for the next 10 or 20 years. You've got all of that to fill in? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, it was fun to have Jack's accent acknowledged. He was in London. Okay, fine. Sound familiar? Like father, like son? Hmm? You know, it's amazing to me, in the 70s and 80s, fandom felt the need to explain why, in the 23rd century, Scotty and Chekhov still had accents after everyone had blended and space shipped out across the galaxy. And people just decided it was like a hobby. It was an affectation. And they had to go back to school to learn their accents. But what we're getting now, 24th century, accent schmaccent. It's like everybody just talk the way you want to talk. Especially since half the time that's some kind of proper British. <laughs> but hey, look around the rest of what's going on. Vatic. Oh, my God. After the cackling and the weeing, you people who were worried about having a cardboard villain, I love the way she is so dead calm through the first half of this. Fire. Follow them. Of course, it all blows up finally at about Act 3, and she gets to scream, fire, fire. But it really, it really makes you wonder what's going on with her. It's, we're in for good stuff. I just have a feeling. Okay, I've seen the first six. <laughs> we're in for good stuff with her. Don't worry about it. And it's amazing this episode gets into one of those aspects of production modern day in the legacy series. They CGI youthened him. Now, the little bit of Q last season was really well done, but it was so short. Here we got a full scene with Picard and Riker at the birth of Thaddeus. And look it up. Timeline tells us that was 2381. So this scene we're watching here it's just two years after Nemesis. Does it work for you? It works for me. It works for me. It's also good to know that Swafford Whiskey is apparently the official licensed whiskey of Ten Forward Bar for 20 years. Insider's tip, check it out. Uh, Swafford is one of uh, Terry Metalis's oldest friends. He has Swafford Whiskey in every show he does. So it's nice to know that Picard and Picard Season 3 especially are uh, another niche on that log for Terry and his uh, in his running in jokes. Yay. But I gotta say, I had a chill. I don't know if it was intended or not at that that birth of Thaddeus conversation between Riker and Picard talking the setup for the title, right? The 17 seconds. And Riker comes he confides to his old friend and the way he puts it You'd burn the world down for them. I just got a chill knowing that it was, what, 
six short years away from the synth attack on Mars, talking about burning down worlds. Ugh. Intention or not, it had an effect on me. Oh, and speaking of ye of little faith, are, are you coming along with Shaw now? It was Captain Shaw who was the only one, despite being injured, with protruding bones and all of that. Shaw was the one who was still focusing on the real mystery of the moment. How the hell is she tracking them inside the nebula? Where's our Rathacon magic here? <laughs> I thought one nebula was, you know, good for all for hiding. He's the one who's telling you to focus on that. By the way, I got to say, before that moment, first of all, they lose sensors and he sends somebody on the windows. I love the two at the back. It's like the moment when Riker says, hey, if we have to, we don't know we're out of warp. I think it's in Brothers on Next Gen. We wouldn't know we were out of warp unless we looked out a porthole. It was a great callback to that. He sends them down, but I love the way he calls on the comm and just addresses them as stern. I guess if he called him aft, that would be a little eh. But I just love that. Stern, report. For those of you keeping score at home and we're getting worried about the eternal bridge crew that never left their seats, yeah. 36 hour watch, you're way over time. Get out of here. Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, and Tavine, our Vulcan on the bridge, totally earned her science officer stripes. Did you hear her actually utter the words? It's some kind of kudos, kudos. That's a Bajoran applause for her and the entire writer's room as well. Okay, enough on the bridge, but back at the lowly little La Serena. Look, I said I loved Worf's entrance like everyone else, right? Fight choreography like we've never seen the Klingon employ. But what I laughed at really was his second scene in this episode. When they're back, she comes to, Rafi comes to and says, who are you? And under my breath, I'm already thinking he'll say, I am Worf, son of Moog, uh, you know. But no, he goes through the whole litany here. It's just hysterical. I laughed harder at that scene than I have in anything all year long just because I knew the writing was so on point. The characters are so on point. Something as ridiculous as how the way straight ass wharf would introduce himself to her and to an audience uh was it was right there of course it was 17 more lines of biography here than we were expecting but it was fine it was fine by the way let seven have her ship to captain in a spinoff i want the wharf and raffi show oh my god what a buddy cop show this is they could be the section 31 show running around doing black ops they're hysterical together what is this about Michael Dorn and his wharf having this great chemistry with all these leading women of the show? It's amazing. Not to mention that wharf smile that creeps in when Raffi is browbeating him about, you're not the first legend to get on my ass. And you know exactly who she's talking about. And we know he knows exactly who she's talking about. Oh, and come on, be honest. When wharf talked about his friend in The Great Link, were you more of a klempt to realize that, yes, these are shapeshifters we're talking about? Or were you more gobsmacked that, yeah, he's talking about Odo and the fact that it's only going to be a mention because we no longer have Renee with us, unless it's another CGI attempt or some kind of stock footage. Okay, but still, the moment kind of comes out of nowhere and you realize this is, is not just a TNG reunion. We're going to hashtag use the universe for real. Ah, uh, Odo. But most of all, this whole changeling plot, did you notice what was going on? It's affecting everyone. People are all getting involved all over the ship. But, you know, cut to seven. They've got changelings, and she's thinking, not my series. Here's Picard, even. Hey, not my series. Thank God you got Worf in there. I got this, guys. Here, hold my prune juice. But, okay. The big issues, yes, changelings, but that portal weapon? I mean, what, if if Vatic had a chief medical officer on our ship, I think he'd have to be Dr. Strange. Jeez. And what is going on with Jack and his hallucinations? Uh, my theory? It's the revenge of the mycelial network. And then finally, aside from the mystery of when are you finally going to get LaForge in here with his other daughter, uh, much less 
much less Deanna in the flesh and not just on a comms viewer in a flashback. But finally, 17 seconds. 17 seconds. The story that Riker tells Picard right after Thaddeus' birth of the longest turbo lift ride of his life when he's racing down in the Titan to get down when there's an issue, there's a problem with Thaddeus' birth with Deanna. It's, it's a real heart tugger of a story. And I don't know if you did, but yes. So you wouldn't have to. I timed. When you have the parallel event of Picard racing down in a turbo lift to get to his adult son, Jack, and share the feeling. On the Titan, bigger ship, older actors, I don't know. It was 27 seconds for him. What is that, inflation? Just saying. Someone's going to keep count, so you don't have to. But geez, I'm telling you, gang, I, I'm looking around the interwebs this week, and uh, I feel like people are caving in. The skeptics are saying, all right, all right, I give up. It's amazing. It's amazing. Not beyond reproach and not beyond critique. I've seen a few people take a few pot shots at some of the logic potentials here. But yes, and all of you who had the weird side eye guy on your bingo card for a villain, okay, fine. You were right. You were right. But are you ready? Are you ready for episode four? I hope so. Because with that, I am signing off on this second opinion from Dr. Trek. But what about you? What did you think? Hey, drop a comment below. Like and subscribe. Do all the things. Boost the signal. Hey, I dare you to subscribe for some sanity in Star Trek Online. Most of all, if you crave more Dr. Trek and our Trekland point of view, Check out every Star Trek podcast and live stream and experience that we offer over at LarryNemechek.com. Get on my list, too. Trek well, everybody. <laughs>